call the meeting to order. Um, the meeting of the Planning and Zoning um, on August 19th, we're called to order that use of cellular telephones is not permitted and such telephones shall be turned off or otherwise silenced during this meeting. Speaking to the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, there are guidelines that are out on the, on the table out there, but I'm going to clarify them for you. Um, clearly state your name and address. Please keep your remarks pertinent to the issue being considered by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Please do not repeat the same statements that were made by a previous speaker. Please speak to the Planning and Zoning Commission as you would like to be spoken to. Please do not address applicants or other audience members directly. And please make your comments at the podium and directed to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So our first order of business is to approve the minutes for the June 17th, 2021 meeting. So we, thank second. you. We have a motion by Commissioner Davis, a second by Commissioner Wingeter. All in favor? Signif or actually just vote. There we go. With all members voting aye, the motion passed. Thank you. Um, I might note also that it takes a um, four positive votes to pass an issue here, regardless of the number of, of commissioners here, it will take four because that's the majority of the board of seven. So our first uh, public hearing is CUP 46 2021, a request for the approval of a conditional use permit to allow a home daycare with a capacity of up to 15 children to be located in an R2 one unit residential zone at 3525 Partridge Lane. Does the commission, the, does the staff have a report? Thank you, Madam Chair. An application has been submitted for a conditional use permit to allow for the expansion of an existing daycare from eight children to 15 children located at 3525 Partridge Lane. The subject property is zoned R2, one unit residential, and all surrounding properties are zoned the same. All existing land uses in the area are single family residential. Partridge Lane provides access to the property and its functional classification is a local street, primarily meant to serve properties along the street and not pass through traffic. It is staff's opinion that the proposed expansion of the daycare from eight children to, to a maximum of 15 will not noticeably increase traffic volume or congestion or cause a traffic hazard in the area. The existing daycare has been in operation since July 13th, 2021 with a maximum capacity of eight children. The daycare will operate five days per week during the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. A fenced outdoor play area is provided on the property and the property has a double car with driveway which is adequate to park multiple vehicles. If the applicant leaves the driveway open and available for customers, the off-street parking meets the city's minimum requirement. The Department of Family Services handles licensing, evaluates the adequacy of the area within the house and yard for play and other activities, and regulates the nature and quality of the care provided. Child cares are inspected by the City County Health Department and the City Fire Department regularly. Based on the information provided by the DFS, there are four licensed daycares in the Meadowlark subdivision in addition to the subject property. Madam Chair, we've included four recommended conditions of approval. We have not received any formal written public comments on this case, and I have five exhibits to enter into the record. A is a conditional use permit application. B, map of the 300 foot notification zone. C, legal notice sent to the Star Tribune. D, notice of public hearing sent to property owners within 300 feet and E, memo to the chairperson and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. That concludes my report. Thank you. I now declare the public hearing open for consideration of case number CUP 46 2021. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with state statutes, the rules of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and other applicable laws. I would ask those individuals who address the commission to approach the lectern, identify yourself, and state your address. Would the person representing case number CUP 46 2021 come forward and explain the application? Um, excuse me, Wallace? Madam Chairperson, while the applicant is coming forward, I would note for the record that Mr. Bates is now here and joined the meeting at 6.02 p.m. Thank you. Hi, I am Cassie Ann Hancock. I own and operate the daycare at 307 Playhouse West. Um, even though I've only been late licensed through this location since last year, I have actually ran a daycare on the east side of town a couple of years ago, but I had to close down for personal reasons. And it's just taken me this long to get my house up to code for the daycare to transfer to this location here. 
Um, I've got a great location off the main street. Directly next to me is a city park that my kids can walk from on my property straight into the park. They don't even have to get on the sidewalk. Um, directly across the park, all through the field, is the bus stop. So I am at a prime location for before and after school care that provides a safe transport for the kids even just to walk to my house. I can physically see them and I can even just walk out there with my group of kids to pick kids from the bus stop. So um, I'm just here for to see if I can get my expansion. I have three kids of my own. Two of them take up my daycare spots. So that really only leaves me with six spots as a license holder of eight that I can fill. And financially, I just need to fill more than that. So I do already have someone licensed to come help if I am approved and there will be two full-time licensed uh, personnel at all times if there's if I'm over capacity. So if there's any questions or... Do any members have questions? Mr. Wigner, Chairman, Commissioner Wigner? Yes, ma'am. I was wondering um, what kind of qualifications does your, the, your employees have? I mean, do they go through some training? Yes. My... Um, Anybody that comes to work in my daycare, they have to have the mandatory um, 12 credits that they take through the state of Wyoming, which cover health and safety basics, sleep, uh, safe sleep training, fire safety, escape training, and first aid CPR help. All, um, they also go through their own background check. So uh, he's uh, the person, which is my husband, who will be helping me. He's already gone through the fingerprinting, the background um, through the state as far as a criminal record and driving record and he's gone through all the online hands-on training also and then I do continuing training we will both continue our training every year on top of the health and safety basics we're required to take up to eight credit hours of additional child care um, classes so that includes you know infant training credentials um, better, you know, how you can rearrange your menu, that kind of stuff, and that's stuff we take all throughout the year. Thank you, and, and that's monitored by the, um, by the state. Yes, right? and it's all online on Wyoming Stars. Anybody could look up our place and get credentials from both me and my husband. So are you um, in agreement with the, the four conditions that have been outlined? Yes. Including the two open paved off-street parking spaces? Yep. And those are open and available at all times? For at all times. During business hours, yes, I will leave them open and available. Okay. So they're not now, but they will be when, if this gets approved? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Any other questions? I do. Yes. Commissioner Bates? Um, is there going to be two people present at all times, or will you be left, will it be by... Yourself, and the only reason why is I'm looking at the egress for in case of a fire, and I see that one of the options is to go into the backyard, and I'm assuming that your backyard has a, fin a gate that, yes, you could access, but if somebody wasn't able to, if something happened to one person, could the, if they couldn't go out the front, they're kind of stuck in the backyard, and that can, I mean, that might not be my concern. I have an expert. Or my not a, my concern, but I guess part of this, but. No, I, just, I understand exactly what you're saying. That was part of what I had to do to get my location approved by DFS is put in a fence that can be opened from the outside, and the, so they can go into my backyard through my house or through the side yard, which so they're able to get out of the backyard. As far as your question, if I will be left alone with the kids, I will never be left alone with the kids unless the ratio is allowable, which is eight kids to one person, or only I can only have one infant at a time for one person right now without an additional infant credit. So anytime there is um, six kids and an infant or eight older kids, one in year and older, um, I will be there. If there's anything over eight, my husband will always be there. That's part of the reason that I needed the conditional use license is to meet the ratios. I've got a couple kids who have siblings, so whenever spring break happens, Christmas breaks, they're the ones that put me over the eight capacity. And I don't, I just don't want to get you know, in trouble with the state as far as someone showing up and, hey, I've got two extra kids because it's spring break. And my kids are home, you know, so. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? I had one other question. Yes, Commissioner Wingeter. Yes, I was, I was leading through these papers, and I, I might be here and I missed it. 
But the ages of their kids will be just grade school? I mean, I would like to open my house to all ages that need it. There's a lot of um, kids that don't have a place to go before school and after school. And these are the five and olders, you know, even up to age 13. So I would like to um, be a house that they can come have breakfast at and I can get them to the bus stop, make sure they get on the bus the right time and then vice versa on the way home. The bus comes to my house by 4.30. I can collect them from the bus stop and give them snacks. Um, and then by, you know, 5.30 or so, parents pick up. During the winter time when most kids are at school, I will only have um, kids that are young, four and younger. That, you know, some, I have some preschool kids that do half days with me, but most of my kids are four and under. Okay, on the same lines, Madam Chair, uh, the park next door, you're going to be utilizing that a little bit? Yes. yes. Well, um, there's kind of a blind corner there, and... Uh, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, if you use a park next door, it's not, there's no fence on it. It's a public park. Yes. So I want to make sure you have somebody over there to make sure the kids don't run out of the street. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they will never be allowed at the park by themselves. There's no, um, in the age group that I typically have, I don't leave them alone at all, even during nap time. So if we go outside, it will be me or my husband take everybody out together. And if someone has to use the bathroom, we all go inside together. Luckily, my park that I have, if you, you can kind of see on the pictures, there's two long fields behind um, the neighborhoods that provide me and my I mean, it's a huge area to play. They don't even try to go in the street because we've got such a large area to play. So as far as, you know, being able to take them safely, they can literally walk through my front yard and cut across my lawn. They don't even have to get on the sidewalk to get to that park and vice versa. So um, they'll always, they'll probably most likely be two of us when we are at the park, just because, you know, kids are sneaky and they like to run off, especially the littles. But if there ever happened to be where it was just me under the uh, ratio of eight kids, then it would be me taking them all out or taking them all in together for bathroom breaks or whatnot. They would never be left out alone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? As, thank you. Thank you. As required by state law, we have to invite people to comment in favor of or in opposition to all public hearings. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in, in favor of case number CUP 46 2021? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to case CUP 46 2021? There being no others to speak for or against this case, I now declare the public hearing closed and entertain a motion to approve, deny, or table case CUP 46 2021. Madam, Chair. Madam Chairman, yes. I understand the questions and um, why everyone was kind of curious about those things that were asked. But I would remind the commission that on page three of your staff report are the relevant factors that you can exactly. use to make the decision. Thank and you. The questions and the information that was provided during those do not appear to be the relevant factors that can be used to make the determination. Thank you for clarifying that. Madam Chair? Yes. I recommend approval of item CUP 46 2021 with the four conditions recommended by the staff. All set. Well, I have a motion by Commissioner Feth, a second by Commissioner Wingeter. We can vote. Madam Chair. Well, I guess we could have we could have some discussion if there's any discussion. One other thing, I'd uh, I'd ask that the commission use the uh, findings of fact. Um, we want to use the um, uh, the motion that motion. you wrote. Yes. Yes, it's on uh, page 12 of your packet. There's a if you want to read it. I note that the Planning and Zoning Commission has considered all relevant factors, including but not limited to those set forth in the Casper Municipal Code Section 17.12.240H and find that the conditional use permit meets the two findings required by the Casper Municipal Code Section 17.12.240. On that basis, I move approval of CUP-46-2021 with the four conditions stated in the staff report. Thank you. I and you seconded that. So any discussion? Then we all vote.
With all members voting yes. Oh, you say that, sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to help out here. It's your first time. With all members voting yes, the motion passes. I'm trying to steal your thunder there. <laughs> Our second case this evening is ANX 48 2021 and ZOC 53 2021, a request for annexation into the city of Casper for two acres, more or less, located at 5051 Link Drive, described as Track 31, Dollar Number 3 subdivision, and zoning said property as M1 Limited Industrial. Applicant is Brusaw Mechanical Company, LLC. Do we have a staff report? Thank you, Madam Chair. Application has been made for the annexation of two acres, more or less, located at 5051 Link Drive. The impetus for the annexation is a request by the property owner for city utilities. Per city policy, the provision of city utilities triggers a mandatory annexation if the property is legally eligible. The property is contiguous with the current municipal boundary on both the east and south and thus eligible for annexation. The property has frontage on two public right-of-ways, Magnolia Street and Link Drive. Both streets are currently undeveloped dirt roads. There are no plans at this time to construct, construct Link Drive or Magnolia Street to city standards. However, staff has included a recommended condition of approval that if included will require the applicants to participate in the cost of constructing standard city streets when a local assessment or improvement district is formed. The applicants have requested M1 limited industrial zoning for the parcel. Existing city, city zoning surrounding the property is M1 to the east and C4 highway business to the south. The existing industrial use of the property would be a legal and conforming use under the M1 zoning classification. Uh, Madam Chair, we've included one recommended condition of approval. We have not received any written public comments and I have six exhibits to enter into the record. A is an application for annexation, B, petition for a zone change, C, vicinity map of the 300 foot notification zone, D, public notice sent to the Star Tribune, E, notice of public hearing sent to property owners within 300 feet, and F, memo to the chairperson and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. That concludes our report. And now declare the public hearing open for consideration of case number ANX 48-2021 and ZOC 53-2021. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with state statutes, the rules of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and other applicable laws. I would ask those individuals who address the commission to identify yourself and state your address. Would the person representing these cases come forward and explain the application? Madam Chair, Planning Commission, my name is Sean Gustafson with ECS Engineers, um, 111 West 2nd, uh, Suite 600 in Casper. Um, I think uh, the staff report laid it out pretty close, or pretty close, actually just right, sorry Craig, um, <laughs> that uh, the, the issue here right now is, is they do haul water into a cistern to this, uh, to this facility and they have a septic system at the facility when there is uh, sanitary sewer out in the street, but in order to get into the sanitary sewer, we really need water, so we're going to, um, it, assuming that this may be passed, uh, we will extend the water line in Link Drive, bring a uh, service to this facility, and then connect up the sanitary sewer to this facility. And, and as, as the planner said, we're uh, contiguous to the city of Casper, so, and uh, the requirement is there, so we're applying. So I guess with that, uh, I'd love to answer any questions or that you may have. I have a question. Um, the, there is one condition, and that condition is that you would be, that the, the owner would participate in a future local assessment on the streets and they're aware of and agree to that condition? Yes, they do. And, and that will attach to the land should he decide to sell the land, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, any, does the commissioner, Commissioner uh, Wingeter. Is this a case of spot zoning uh, that he wanted to bring? So he just wanna, the reason why he's bringing it in the city again is because of water and sewage and all that? Yes. 
Now, is just curiosity, is your fire insurance and everything, is that cheaper, or have you checked into that? Um, there something in the city? If there is water and fire protection available, which there will be by a fire hydrant set on the, uh, I guess you'd say that's the east and north side of the property, uh, then yes, that does help. Okay, thank you. Do any other commissioners have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. As required by state law, we have to invite people to comment in favor of or in opposition to all public hearings. Is there anyone to speak in favor of these cases? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to these cases? There being no one to speak for or against these cases, I now declare the public hearing closed and advise that the annexation and zone change will be voted on separately. I will entertain a motion to approve and forward a due pass recommendation to the City Council, deny or table case number ANX 48-2021 regarding the annexation. Madam Chair, I'll make that motion. We uh, uh, pass ANX 48-2021 and, oh, you want separate motions? No, no, we're going to do separate motions. No, 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 we're going to do separate motions, Terry. We're going to do it separately. Okay. So you're doing the annexation yeah, with the one that. condition and forward to City Council with the due pass recommendation? Yes, yeah, sure. Is that your motion? I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion by Chairman or Commissioner Wingeter and a second by Commissioner McIntosh. Um, any co discussion? I have a yes, Commissioner Bates. For annexation, is in that area, is there any other city property? It's all around it. Is that what you said? Was the uh, colored parcels mm -hmm. uh, that are shown on the map right now are city. The white parcels are county. So it's half and half. So it is okay. it is contingent to or contiguous, contiguous to a, a city property. Right. Oh. I saw that it was grayed out and it says buildings, but I didn't see on the that that was part of city. So sorry. Okay. Okay, that's all. Okay. So, um, yes. yes. What is the zoning of the other properties in the area? Um, on that map, the, uh, um, and I'm colorblind, so I, I believe it's gray hash marks are uh, M1, limited industrial, uh, yeah. same as what this property is, is I see asking for, and then C4 is the other color. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. We can vote on the first motion, the annexation. With all members voting yes, the motion passes. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve and forward a due pass recommendation to the City Council deny or table case number ZOC 53-2021 regarding the zoning. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Davis. Second. And a second by Commissioner Feth. Do we have any discussion on this for the zoning? Okay, let's vote on it. With all members voting yes, the motion passes. Our third case this evening, sub 49 2021, a subdivision proposal creating the Trails West Estates number six subdivision consisting of a vacation and replat of lots two through 18, block 21, lots two through eight, block 23, Trails West Estates and Lot 8, Block 4, and Lot 9, Block 5, Prairie Park Estates. Applicants, Dennis and Judy Langdon and Christopher and Amber Jones. Do we have a staff report? Thank you, Madam Chair. Application has been made to vacate and replat 18 acres, more or less, located north of Trevitt Lane and west of Applegate Drive. The area is currently platted as a residential subdivision, but is undeveloped. The purpose of the replat is to vacate the existing lots and undevelop right-of-ways to create six newly configured lots along Trevitt Lane and a 16-acre tract north of said lots. All proposed lots exceed the city's minimum lot size of 4,000 square feet in an R4 zoning district. In that the block length of Trevitt Lane between Flintlock Drive and Applegate Drive exceeds 500 feet, the municipal co 
code requires a 20 foot wide pedestrian easement to be located mid block, which has been provided between proposed lots three and four. At such time that track day is subdivided for development in the future, multiple public streets will need to be platted and built to meet city's connectivity standards. Uh, Madam Chair, there's no recommended conditions of approval with this case. Uh, we have no written public comments to offer, and I have six exhibits. A is the replat application. B, vicinity map of the 300-foot notification zone. C, copy the plat. D, public notice sent to the Star Tribune. E, notice of public hearing sent to property owners within 300 feet. And F, memo to the chairperson and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. That concludes our report. Thank you. I now declare the public hearing open for consideration of case number SUB 49-2021. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with state statutes, the rules of Planning and Zoning Commission, and other applicable laws. I would ask those individuals who address the commission to approach the lectern, identify yourself, and state your address. Would the person representing case number SUB 49-2021 come forward and explain the application? Good evening, Commissioners. Dennis Langdon, 770 West Collins, Casper, Wyoming. What we're doing is basically, as you can see, Craig, can you have the lot, please? What we've got is the regular, the, um, the zoning is R4, and the planning was done 42 years ago. Okay? That's the planning that was done 42 years ago? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So we're vacating that idea because it doesn't work in, right now. So what we're doing to the new one, we're designing six new lots in front because of the views of the Kessler Mountain and the river. There are 16,000 square, 16, 600 square feet approximately, plus or minus, on those front lots. And the back of it will have a design in the future. Okay? We're doing something different to accommodate what the needs are in Casper, especially on the west side. Are there any questions? I have a question. Commissioner Pat. Uh, on, your, on the map that shows the, uh, the five lots along uh, Trevitt Lane. The old you one? You have a wagon wheel court. Right. Is that being vacated? Coming all the way through. You're talking about the, the the original plat shows wagon wheel court coming up as a um, as an in and out, not a thorough through street. That's being vacated along with everything right. else. But we're going to use that in the future. Okay, so you still have the uh, pedestrian easement there. That's just yes, a pedestrian easement. Well, that that's not going to be wide enough for a street, though. No, that is not. Okay. To the left, on your left side. Going up Flint, we're going to be taking our road and then cutting behind. We're going to put a berm on the backside to protect those lots and then put a berm and do something different up around the, on the north side of that. We're going to be coming into the gated area we're going to be putting in. So we're going to have two outlets. Okay? Thank you. So it's not just one in and out. We want to have, make sure we have two. Okay, so you're just going to have the lots on the top, the lots on the bottom, and then the big open space that you'll... There's no lot. There's no lot you, I know, I know. You're going to do the six lots down on, on Trevitt Lane. Right. And then the lots up by... What's that street up there? I'll get to that. Whiskey Gap Road. Whiskey Gap Road. Are there going to be any lots up there, any platted lots up there on Whiskey Gap Road? Or are those going to be part of that's what you're... part of me. Oh, that's not part of you? No. The Trails West Estates is not part of you? No. Okay. Hurry Park. So you're creating the Trails West Estates number six. Right. I'm going to redesign the whole thing. And that's what you've got on the bottom there and up the side on that are, those are already, the only thing we're talking about are the uh, six I'm lots, six lots on Trevitt. 
Yep. Madam Chair, yeah. We have, we're dealing with six lots, Madam Chair, and then we've opened that up, getting rid of the old 42-year-old design, okay? And we're bringing in, but right now we want to get that part of it done because we have to protect the values of the people across the street. Okay. Okay? Because they're nice big lots right now. Yes. Yes. Does anybody else have any questions? Yes, I have. Commissioner Winger. Mr. the center part of it, it's, it's, is it all about the same developer though? I mean, you're just going to develop that later. Right? Correct. That is correct, Terry. And are the houses going to get around the construction? Are they going to be kind of close to the houses, the design of the houses north of there? No. They're going to be well, north of Mr. Are we talking about the likely? The big lots, houses? No. The no, that's that size. Excuse me. They won't be the size. The lots won't be that size for the homes and the future development. No. Okay. So they're going to be more in line with the houses north of to that lane. Let's put it this way, Commissioner. It's going to be in a ballpark of 15 to 1,700 square feet plus a two-car garage. Any other questions? Any other questions? For, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. As required by state law, we have to invite people to comment in favor of or in opposition to all public hearings. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of case SUB 49-2021? I'm, I'm either for or against. I'm just going to state, state, your, state your name and address, please. My name is Dennis Steensland. I live at 533 South Washington, Casper, Wyoming. Uh, if this was plotted 42 years ago, my curiosity, is this a, a, a two-year build-out project or is it something that's gonna, gonna run 10 years and ask for another zoning change later on? So I'm, my curiosity is, is how, how quick of a project is this? Uh, and how much land is going to be? I don't even know where it is. To tell you the okay, truth. Okay. Well, since since they're uh, taking all that all those middle pieces of property and platting it into one lot, it is going to take more trips back to get it rezoned. So we're zoning only those six lots that run on Trevitt Lane. Can you point out Trevitt Lane for me, please? Um. Trevitt Lane's right here. It's, have you? It's right on the bottom here. Those six lots right there, it'll be the bottom street there. In Trevor Lane are those six lots right along there, all 16,000 square foot lots. So they're pretty decent sized lots. So they're going to have larger than what, you know, larger than what was originally anticipated in that area. And it's a, it's a fast moving project. Yeah, that's my question. Well, the projects move as quickly as you can sell the property. So if you've got people to buy it, you know, that's typically how things work. Um, I have a project over by my house that we approved a couple of years ago and it's still going. Okay. You know okay. where Trevette Lane is? It's way west of town off of Robinson Road. Uh, no. if, if you go over the Robertson Bridge, go over Robertson Road Bridge, and, right. then, and then your first um, left, and that will be Trevette Lane. Okay, okay. High dollar establishments, in my Well, opinion. yes, they would be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. I guess I'm not going to get an answer for a time frame. And that's, that was my question. No, probably not. Okay. Probably, wouldn't we all want to have that crystal ball? <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of an idea. Thank you. Certainly. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to case number SUB 49 2021? I will entertain a motion to approve and forward to council with a due pass recommendation, deny or table case number SUB 49-2021 regarding the vacation and replat. Madam Chair, I'll make the motion that we uh, support the Charles West Estate number six SUB or SUR. Is that a B? SUB, it's a B. I just got these, these boxes there. 
That's the 49 2021. And forward to City Council with the due pass recommendation. I, we have a motion by Mr. Wingeter. I'll second. A second by Commissioner Feth. Do we have any discussion? Then let's vote. I have one question. Okay. What's your construction schedule on the lots for the construction? First commission, first six? Yes. This spring? This spring? Yes. Yeah, At the 2022? Yes. There we go. And we answered your question there too. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can vote now. With all members voting yes, the motion passes. Lost my place. Here we are. Roller school. I know. So our our um, fourth case is ZOC 5221, a request for a zone change of the property located at 129 North Elk Street, former Willard School, lots one through 12, block 97, Butler's Edition, from zoning classification ED Educational District to C2 general business. The purpose of the requested zone change is to facilitate the redevelopment of the former school as the Willard campus for the Casper Housing Authority, including offices, a daycare and job training programs. Do we have a re uh, staff report? Absolutely, thank you, Madam Chair. The Casper Housing Authority has applied for a zone change for the former Willard School property located at 129 North Elk Street from ED Educational District to C2 general business. The applicant plans to convert the former school into a multi-purpose facility to include office space, a daycare facility, and a job training center. The property consists of 12 platted lots and the property surrounding the former school are zoned R2 to the north and west, R4 to the south, and R3, one to four unit residential to the east. Existing land uses in the surrounding area are primarily residential. The staff report goes into further detail about the zone change and how it's supported by the comprehensive land use plan as well as uh, how it fits in the existing neighborhood. So I'm not gonna go ahead and read that part. I would note that we do have two public comments on this case and we have seven exhibits. A is the petition for a zone change. B, vicinity map of the 300 foot notification zone. C, public notice sent to the Star Tribune. D. Notice of public hearing sent to property owners within 300 feet. E, public comment from 123 North Lowell. F, public comment from 133 North Lowell. And G, memo to the chairperson and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I now declare the public hearing open for the consideration of case number ZOC 5221. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with state statutes, the rules of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and other applicable laws. I would ask those individuals who address the commission to identify yourself and state your address. Would the person representing this case come, please come forward and explain the application? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Kim Summerall Wright. I'm the Executive Director of the Casper Housing Authority, 145 North Durban, um, here in Casper, of course. Um, what we're trying to do, the project is actually two separate buildings. The building that borders up to First Street was built in the 50s, and you can see it connects by a hallway to an, a newer building that was built in the 70s. The older building will be the Casper Housing Authority offices. Um, it will also include the training center. We are doing that because there has been a new DFS rule that does not allow someone to just have a class in the evening. So for example, we have a lot of wonderful um, nonprofits here in Casper, like uh, Mercer is a wonderful, um, just a great place. And they used to be able to say the kids can go next door with the staff. Um, DFS does not allow that. They must be in a licensed facility. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we are putting in the training center so that we can reach out to some of the nonprofits and provide a space where they can come, their children can be in a licensed facility. Um, we are trying to merge all of our stuff together. Um, we, are, we have grown a lot in the last few years. And so um, what we're doing is bringing it together for Wyoming's first HUD and Vision Center. 
And whenever you go across to the second part, um, it is actually the, the building from the 70s is where the daycare center is gonna go. So the access points for both of the buildings, the, the Casper Housing Authority will be on, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Elk Street or? It will be on Elk Street, yes. And while the daycare is on Lowell Street. So they, they won't, you'll have to go completely to the other side of the building. Now what we're planning, you can see the existing parking lot where it has um, the, the barrier there where the buses used to go in and out, that will actually be removed and that will be put back to parking. The inside of the building where it comes between the two buildings we're going to provide a driveway off of um, Elk Street that will come into that, and that will actually be turned into a, an interior parking lot for staff. And then where the portables are right now, all of that will be parking lot for the daycare mm -hmm. center. Um, we will also be hopefully taking out the red paint where the buses used to park, and that will be on-street parking for visitors for um, the Casper Housing Authority, while the daycare center staff and drop-off points will be on the other side of the building. Well, or if it's on the street for anybody who wants to park on the street. Of course, of <laughs> course. <laughs> um, our point was hopefully that anyone visiting there would point on the side because it is almost a full city block. And we wanted to make sure they understood, please don't, please don't park across the street you know, it'd be, it'd be better if you were over on our side of the street. Um, we will not be having anywhere near the amount of traffic that the um, school district had, no matter what's going on there. Um, we do have a significant amount of experience in developing both commercial and um, housing. Every project that we've done, again, this is a three and a half million dollar acquisition rehab. Everything that we've done, when we've done an acquisition rehab, it has raised the property values in the surrounding neighborhood. Um, anytime we built, it has had the exact same effect. We've done that at Ravencrest up on Wyoming Boulevard and then Center Point downtown. We own several and manage several commercial properties as well. And so as we, we um, modernize and bring things up to code, um, it does make a huge difference. One of the things that has happened since we submitted this application is the playground. So we will be making it a little bit sm smaller in order to allow for that driveway to come in. However, we've received a significant grant to turn it into an edible playground. And so it will be um, landscaped, community gardens will be put in, um, and so you'll be seeing an orchard, you'll see new trees go in there. It will be something that doesn't exist here in Casper, so we're pretty excited. Um, as for the longevity, that is going to be a custom and very expensive playground, and so there is no way we're going to leave that. So if we were to ever outgrow 30,000 square feet, which I, I'm, Strug I, that's a lot of pressure, I gotta mm -hmm. tell you. Um, if we were to ever outgrow that, our daycare would remain. Um, it's just, it, I think it's gonna be pretty amazing once we get it completely done. So I'm happy to answer any questions. And if, if I haven't addressed everything that, that the neighbors would like to know about, I'm happy to address those questions as well. Do we have any questions? I have two. Okay. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Ringeter. Um, I came by there on the way down here tonight because I live on the east side of town. Did you stop where the par stop signs are out? <laughs> I, was uh, uh, I saw a tractor there, and I realized that uh, construction and all that. I mm -hmm. understand that. But if you are you going to have any? You have some heavy equipment, don't you? Um, we we had some. Um, we have some things at different properties. For example, our Ravencrest project on Wyoming Boulevard because it is up towards the mountain, it gets a significant amount of snow. And so we do have heavy equipment on that property to remove snow. Um, we do not have anything that we keep in our office or our maintenance area. Well, what I was wondering about if you park the heavy equipment because it's a residential area, right. you put up a fence on that side. On the, we could certainly do that. On the, on the north side. Yeah, that wouldn't be a problem. If, the, if, if you're if the heavy equipment's there permanently? Um, it's not planned to be there. We don't have anything that, um, that is from one of our vendors that is getting ready to take a look at putting that driveway in. Um, we have asked, of course, asked them to wait <laughs> and not do that, um, but it is there for that reason and to start on the playground. But, but it is not ours. It does the not. The other question I had was, there's a letter here that's, they're concerned about the parking situation. Mm -hmm. Now I realize you can't control everybody where they park. I mean, you try. Right. And I know you're providing quite a few parking spaces. Well, they're parking lots, actually. Yeah. But uh, are you, uh, 
it might pay for you to go visit with a neighbor or two. You know, we've only had the, the property about three months, and we have not had a chance. Generally, we would go in and have a little bit of a party to meet everyone, and we just have not had a chance to do that. So we've only had it just a very short amount of time. And why I have the floor, and then I'll just go ahead. No, please. <laughs> Are you moving any, uh, some of the facilities in North Casper, or to and that school over in North Casper, over to Willard School? So that is an excellent question, and I'm so glad that you asked. Um, the, the property that we purchased in North Casper, the old North Casper School, um, we had initially planned to do this project there. And whenever we had the zoning changed, oh, Grace is my middle name, I apologize. Um, and so what happened was COVID. And so everything got put on hold. And while I know there aren't very many good things I can say about COVID, something pretty amazing happened. Um, when we bought the property, we, we always make a commitment to the neighborhood. Um, our vision is to create communities where people thrive. And so when we bought it, we made a commitment to that neighborhood of what we were going to do there. During COVID, we were approached by the Wyoming Food for Thought Project. And they asked, they are looking for a program center and an urban farm, which is not something that's easy to find within the city of Casper. Now, knowing that North Casper is a food desert, we had to take a very serious look at their application, which includes a grocery store. And so with that commitment in mind, our executive team and our board came together and said, you know, I mean, we love North Casper, we'd love to be there, we, we think it was a great project, but to be completely honest, they need a grocery store and the food that that farm will produce will serve the whole community. And so that really is, we believe, the best choice for that property, and so we have sold that to them. Um, and with that, we, we had to start looking for a new property for us, and that's why we barely had this, just a very short amount of time. So, so it is going to, what we believe is going to be a much better use and hopefully we have fulfilled that commitment to that, that neighborhood and that community. Thank you. You're welcome. Have, believe it or not. Um, Madam Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Davis. I, uh, I have a question. Uh, I noticed that they have some uh, temporary teaching facilities on the north side of your property. The, those are the small buildings in there. Portables. Oh, the portables. Yeah. Yes. What those are is a housing unit you know, that's brought in for people. Right. For classes, are you going to continue using them, or are you going to demolish those? Right now, we have planned to turn that into a parking lot. Um, we do intend to move them to another property, though. Um, so we will. The housing authority will keep them and use. We'll, we will repurpose them. We're going to use them. But we're not going to use them here. We're going to repurpose them. Okay, they're going to be roof, removed from that space. Then. Yes. Yes. Okay. The second question is, I'm concerned about that you have sufficient on street parking and not on the street and you have this stated that uh, you don't anticipate the traffic generated from this facility as what the school generated correct and they parked the street for which i was concerned about right right and you're not going to have that problem no sir um the there won't be enough kids there for, um, I mean, there will be nowhere near the amount of kids in that small building as there was in the entire facility. Um, the other thing is that our center runs long hours, and so everyone is not there at the same time, where when the school was open, it started at a specific time, so everyone had to be there at the same time. Um, we are, as I mentioned, adding two more parking lots um, to encourage people to, we, we would like for them to not be on the street at all. However, it is a public street, and we will be taking out the bus lanes so that parking would be available to anyone to use. Well, they're both located, it's located at the intersection of two collector streets, is why I asked the question. Correct. Which are traffic generators. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it, I, I think there's been quite a bit more speeding down that street since the stop signs were removed. And I, I have spoken with one neighbor who was not, had some concerns about those just being removed in general. Um, however, what we would like to do before we go to the city council and talk about that would be to visit with the neighbors and see what they what they think, um, if it's something they're happy with or if it's something they'd like to see put back. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm not sure I understood okay, it. Uh, my concern is that you have sufficient on-street parking to, to adequately operate your facility. Yeah, um, we believe that we, we do. the city standard. And 
-hmm. And I see the, so you planted or shaking, you said yes or we're okay. Okay, well, and when the school was there um, along Elk Street, that was that that red paint there was for the school buses. Right. Now we won't have that, and so that will actually be returned to parking on street parking, so it will no longer be reserved like it was before. Thank you. As required by state law, we have to invite people to comment in favor of or in opposition to all public hearings. Is there anyone to speak in favor of the, this case? There being no one to speak, um, oh, is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to this case? I'm sorry, my name is Dennis Steensland, five, well, home 1630 East First, which is close to Willard. Right. Okay. Uh, I've talked to Ms. Summerall. Um, my concern, I guess, is the decision will be made tonight. Uh, they won't be in full operation for roughly another year, so we won't know what kind of a issue we have with parking or how the building's used. My concern was with the kids there. Uh, I would like to see them reinstall the stoplights that were taken out roughly a year ago, six months ago. It's made First Street basically a freeway. You know, we get a lot of speed, speeding down that street. Um, I know they're talking about removing all the temporary buildings for parking. So we hear a lot about parking. So to me, there must be gonna be more activity with cars and people than street parking would allow. Uh, I don't have a problem Either way, I'm hoping it will increase the value of the neighborhood. I, I don't see it decreasing it. Uh, but I think at this stage of the game, we really don't know how that building is going to end up impacting the neighborhood. Uh, I think it's too early for that, and yet the decision will be made probably tonight. Uh, so anyway, what I would like the commission to consider, and the city council, I suppose, would be involved is reinstalling the stoplights or at least making a study. Uh, I do know the traffic speed has increased since uh, they removed them. Uh, the good point for me is without the stoplights, uh, you don't have the motorcycles per se that take off after stopping and wrap up their engines. So the noise level maybe has gone down. Uh, but anyway, I guess basically First Street has become a, a very popular street. It's, it's equal to Second Street, I would say. And uh, if we get as much traffic as it sounds like they're going to get there, um, I, I don't think it would hurt to have a stoplight there back again. Uh, they were there, well, six, eight months ago. Somebody on council, city council would know that. Uh, so if I'm, that wasn't really a stoplight. Per se, it was a it was a stop sign with a flashing light on top of it. Is that correct? Like they that's correct. Have in all, school all, in school areas, yeah. right? Elk Street and First Street four way stop. Right. So so what you would like to see is a four way stop put back in that particular area to slow everything down. From the way excuse me from the way I understand uh, the traffic they're going to have and the young kids that they're going to have, uh, maybe the first year there won't be so much but they're talking a long-term plan, uh, probably a 10-year plan. Uh, there's too many variables there that, uh, that I, I don't think the stoplights would hurt. Uh, and I, I would expect them to pay for them rather than the city to pay for them if they're creating the problem. Uh, that's just my thoughts. I have talked to Ms. Summerall. Um, and it's, it's a year out, you know, it's a year out from now, so. So that's my comments concerning this zone change. Okay. Thank you. Does, does anybody on the commission have a question? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in opposition to this case? There being no one else to speak, I now declare the public hearing closed and, and advise, I don't have the right script for this one.
I will entertain a motion to approve and forward a do pass recommendation to the City Council deny or table case ZOC 5221 regarding the zone change. Madam Chair, I don't want to say anything. I'll make that motion that we approve and go, uh, send it to City Council ZOC 5221. Thank you. We have a, a motion by Commissioner Winger. Second it. We have a second by Commissioner McIntosh. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, I do like the idea of the, the, that amber light, but uh, it's probably two years away or a year away. I would assume the traffic department, if you have a lot of traffic, I would assume they'd put one up. That might be a request that might be made of the traffic department. To Madam Chair, our city engineer is here listening tonight, so he's, I'm sure, taking all this in. Okay, and okay, so he'll look at that. So That's good. Sure. So he will study it. So. Okay. No. Yes, Commissioner right. Bates. Um, I am on the board for the Casper Housing Authority, so um, even though I have no financial aspects into this but being on the board i am going to go ahead and abstain and that's why i have not responded or commented regarding this so okay. i just wanted to make that clear okay we have no other um, discussion um, we have a motion and a second we can vote on that my last motion i'll, I'll use my microphone it was we've on. already made the motion it was off well, we already made the motion. It's already been seconded. We heard you. We all heard you. It's okay, Terry. Just vote. We have it. You know, I don't. I think you forgot to turn it on from the get-go. So we're fine. We're really fine. Did you vote? With four vote. Terry's. Hit your button. There you go. With five members voting yes, the motion passes. <laughs> Thank you. That that concludes our public hearings for the night. And I will now go to special issues. The next item on the agenda this evening is actually a special acknowledgement of service. Chuck Davis has given his notice to resign from the Planning and Zoning Commission for personal reasons. Mr. Davis has given many years to our community, notably as the Community Development Director for over three decades. After retiring from the city, Mr. Davis stayed engaged in our community by serving on numerous boards and committees, including this one. As a small token of our appreciation for his years of service to the community, including on this commission, the current Community Com Development Director, Liz Becker, has a special acknowledgement for Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Would you, would you like to say anything? Well, thank you very much. It's, it's really been a pleasure for you to work with the, with the commission and the city staff. Uh, I found the uh, commission is well qualified to serve in the role that you are. You do a good job. And I would certainly like to uh, thank you. Liz and the planning staff for your qualified service that you give, your professionalism in dealing with the public. It's very well, it is very outstanding. And certainly want to thank you for that. And again, like everything, all good things must come to an end. <laughs> well, I'm This gonna, is one of them for me. It's not totally coming to an end. I don't think so yet. I wanted to share a story and, um, because Chuck's been a part of my life for a number of years. Um, growing up here in the 70s, um, again, I've shared with the commission that my dad was on the planning commission. And I would come home from school, and he'd come home from commission meetings, and he would always talk about this gentleman named Chuck Davis. <laughs> because Chuck was the community development director. And I would grow up listening to the growth of Casper in the 70s. And again, dad was sitting where you all are now, and Chuck was down 
um, leading the meetings. And, you know, to see it come full circle, and I was, um, when I, and that was many years before I became community development director, but my father was still alive when Chuck then became a planning commissioner. And dad was really very tickled about this. And he said, Liz, he said, you're going to learn a lot from Chuck. He has been in these boots a long time. And he is great with planning and truly pioneered a lot of what we saw here in the 70s with a lot of the growth and into the 80s. So I was happy um, to hear these stories from dad and uh, to be able to share with him kind of the flip-flop role. So we do have a certificate for you um, that the mayor um, signed on behalf of the city council for you. This is another continuation of your legacy. This letter um, is again modeled after the one that you would have created back in 1979 when my father left the Planning Commission. And in 1979, this letter was signed by the mayor at that point, but this was something you started. And when I found the letter again in my dad's um, memories, I thought, this is pretty cool. I like the way the text was written. I like the fact that the mayor had signed it. So again, this is something else with your touch on it that we will now present to you. And then we also, Chuck, have a framed photo of the city. Um, and again, something for you to look back on and say, yeah, that's the city that I touched. So I know you've lived in Torrington since um, that time, but we're glad you're back here in Casper, and we will continue to learn from you. Even if you're not on this commission, I know that you're going to be touching us with the MPO Citizens Committee. And um, I did enjoy talking with you just before the meeting tonight about the work you did with the census back in the 70s. And now we ourselves have gotten our census numbers back, and Chuck thinks we may need to challenge him a little bit too, like they did in the 70s, and see if we can get some numbers a little bit different. So I maybe I know where you live. I know your phone number, so. We'll <laughs> you can run, but that. you can't hide. <laughs> you stay, okay, you can stay, and I'll come bring it to you. Madam Chair, I'd like to say something too. Commissioner Wader. <laughs> And it's probably more than we're, we better start planning for now because it's going to be here. It may not be in energy, but it's going to be in medical, and it's just going to be in other related stuff. And again, thank you very much for working with you. It's been an enjoyable career. And good luck. Thank, thank you, you, Chuck. Thank you. I, I just wanted to say, in my early 20s, I was... 20, I, I was first elected to the city council, and I was a liaison to the planning commission way back then. And of course, Chuck was planner. And Chuck, you've taught me a lot over the years, and we became very, very good friends. And I want you to know, I'll miss you at these meetings, but I'm sure I'll see you around town. You know that. I'll be here. Thank you very much, Chuck, all those years. Absolutely. The next item on the agenda this evening is communications. Um, do we have any communications from the commissioners? Um, the community development director. Commissioners, in your packet tonight, and you all have met Christy, our new administrative assistant, and she has put at your desktops information about the fall um, the YO Pass um, conference that we have. We hosted this back in 2016. It is back in Casper here in September, and we have money in our budget. Um, I, this will be free to YO Pass committee members, or YO Pass members, pardon me. But um, it is something we do want to encourage if you all are able. Christy would be coordinating our registration as a group and um, we'd like to get that sent in soon. So I'd like to see if you all could get back with her 
here within about a week so that we could get a group going together and I know Christy and Craig will probably try to get down to some of those some of them sound very good that here on, on under the schedule so if you can't make all of it by all means I still want you to register and be able to get to um, some of the sessions that are very very relevant to Casper so you've got it and Christy you've got her contact information also and please Soon you have to know I'd like it a week Terry, yeah, please. And, and you probably should go to this rural planning in Australia, Terry. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm that very, I think you would I'm very find that. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, that was it, Madam Chairman. I'll let Thank you know. You. Um, City Council liaison. Madam Chair and fellow commissioners. Uh, Chuck, one of the greatest accomplishments a human being can have uh, in their lifetime is when people recognize them and how they've been touched and how you've touched people. And you've done such amazing things for this community. You've helped bring Casper where it is today. And for that, I hope you sleep well at night knowing that uh, your life's work has been well recognized and well deserved here tonight. Thank so. you very much, Casper. With that said, uh, we had a, a planning and zoning uh, committee, if you will, um, search to find uh, Mr. Davis's replacement. And we had several qualified uh, candidates, uh, all of which would have done a fantastic job for you. Uh, pending city approval, um, the one that we chose happens to be here tonight, and I'd like to introduce her to you. Uh, her name is uh, Miss Carol Johnson. And she was, she was chosen. Uh, she comes with a spectacular resume, and I think she'll fit in wonderfully with you. So pending council approval, she'll be sitting up there and working with you folks, uh, doing the fine work that you do, which, uh, by the way, I will also congratulate all of you on. Uh, everything that's came to the council uh, that's been presented to us by you folks has been approved. Uh, so we do recognize the hard work and the diligence that you folks put in, and we appreciate that very much from you all. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. OYD um, liaison. Uh, <clears throat> I have a few comments. Uh, since I wound up conducting the meeting, I wasn't able to take Very good copious notes, notes or okay. anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. That's fine. <laughs> but a couple, couple of things I want to say, and I hope I get some of these dates right. Um, the Midwest Avenue project it's scheduled to be completed on September 11th, I believe. But, uh, and uh, the, the industrial avenue part of the project is, well, it was scheduled for the first week in August. I don't know if that's been done or not. It has not been done? Okay. Um, I guess that's about about all on, on the uh, Midwest Avenue projects and that. Uh, the Oscars for, for this year for OID will be held September 15th. And I don't know if Mike would like to add anything, or Commissioner <laughs> McIntosh. Nope, I can't think of anything else. Okay, um, Historic Preservation Liaison, we did not have a meeting in August. Um, and so I have nothing to report. Madam Chair? Yes. Is it open for us now? Um, it was open. You've already, well, I, you've already I, missed your opportunity. Okay, wanted, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was way... No, you've missed your lose, opportunity. Terry. It's over. There's no, no conversations. No, we're done. Turn it off. I was just going to tell you that, Connie, I needed a guest speaker for the Kiwanis Club. I'm in charge of guest speakers. And I invited Connie Hall over to talk about the uh, Casper Historic Preservation. And she did a tremendous job. And she had a lot of questions, As would and people be, were yes. very interested. I think I think we could expect that from her. So yes. uh, she that well, was today at noon. So well done. It was a very good okay. program she put on. Okay, that's all I got to say. Okay, okay. I turned my microphone on for that. <laughs> the, the next meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission is scheduled for September 16th, 2021. 
The final item on this agenda this evening is adjournment. I will now entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. I'll move adjourn. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Feth to adjourn and a second by Commissioner Bates. Let's vote on that puppy. I gotta go walk. Are you gonna walk. vote, Terry, you or are you gonna Terry? stay? You, you have yes. to vote. You have to vote. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the dog's out of the car. He's gonna get out of here. Yeah. <laughs>